Carpentry is one of the oldest professions born from a real need. Plumbing was born out of a need for convenience and hygiene. So which one to choose when you need to make a career choice? We scoured the internet for facts regarding these two professions and found the information we needed. This video will inform you as to which decision to make. Each job has its glamour, but each also has its negative aspects. We looked for the full story. Enjoy the video. Electricians vs Carpenters Which trade should you choose? But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on, so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. But first, if you're already an electrician, running your business, or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business so you don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator has put together a training video you can watch for free right now that will show you exactly how to start. Grow and build your electrical business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work. Free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you will also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals. How to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition. How to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales. How to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link in the description below the video. The History of Electricity In the history of electricity, no single defining moment exists. The way we produce, distribute, install, and use electricity and the devices it powers is the culmination of nearly 300 years of research and development. Long before any knowledge of electricity existed, people were aware of shocks from electric fish. Ancient Egyptian texts dating from 2750 BC referred to these fish as the thunder of the Nile and described them as the protectors of all other fish. Electric fish were again reported millennia later by ancient Greek, Roman and Arabic naturalists and physicians. Several ancient writers such as Pliny the Elder and Scribonius Largus attested to the numbing effect of electric shocks delivered by electric catfish and electric rays and knew that such shocks could travel along conducting objects. Patients suffering from ailments such as gout or headache were directed to touch electric fish in the hope that the powerful jolt might cure them. Electricity would remain little more than an intellectual curiosity for millennia until 1600, when the English scientist William Gilbert wrote De Magnet in which he made a careful study of electricity and magnetism distinguishing the lodestone effect from static electricity produced by rubbing amber. He coined the new Latin word electricus of amber or like amber from electron, the Greek word for amber, to refer to the property of attracting small objects after being rubbed. This association gave rise to the English word electric and electricity which made their first appearance in print in Thomas Brown's Pseudodoxia Epidemica of 1646. Efforts to understand, capture, and tame electricity began in the 18th century. For the next 150 years, dozens of natural scientists in England, Europe, colonial America, and later the United States analyzed electricity in nature, but producing it outside of nature was another matter. Control of electricity didn't happen on any large scale until the late 19th century. Setting the stage for widespread commercial use of electricity were international researchers engaged in pure scientific research, and entrepreneurial businessmen who made their own major discoveries or produced, marketed, and sold products based on other ideas. What does an electrician do? Electricians design, install, and repair electrical power systems, including communications, lighting, and control networks in homes, businesses, factories, and public spaces and thoroughfares. In addition to ensuring that electrical work is up to code, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, as of May 2018, 655,840 people were employed as electricians. What does a carpenter do? Today, carpenters can work indoors and outdoors on many different types of construction projects, including everything from kitchen cabinets to bridges. They may use a variety of hand or power tools to cut and shape wood, plastic, fiberglass, drywall, and other substances. 
Carpenters then fasten these materials with nails, screws, staples, and adhesives. The result is something entirely new that is more useful than a piece of wood. Electrician duties and responsibilities. Electricians' duties are diverse and depend on the employer and specialty, but some responsibilities are common to most. Diagnose electrical problems using diagrams or blueprints. Install and repair electrical systems. Inspect, troubleshoot, and conduct tests. Pinpoint problems using a range of testing devices. Safely use various hand and power tools. Plan the layout and installation of electrical wiring, equipment, and fixtures. Comply with all safety standards and regulations of the National Electrical Code. Supervise and train others in the installation and repair of electrical components. Electricians get electrical power from its source to end users, install it safely, and perform testing, maintenance, and repairs to keep it functioning properly. In the course of doing this work, they may also need to administer first aid or CPR, provide professional advice to customers, order parts, demonstrate knowledge of renewable or green energy components and systems, work productively with co-workers and the public, and remove trees, branches, and brush that interfere with power lines and electrical utility rights of way. Carpenter duties and responsibilities. Carpenters can work in a range of different settings, but most jobs will include duties such as taking measurements, drawing up plans for proposed works, sourcing materials, preparing estimates, and undertaking site visits. Carpenters do a variety of different jobs, but some of their duties might include installing wooden structures such as roofing frames, rafters, partitions, joists, and stud work, designing and installing cabinets, shelving, fitted furniture, drywall, and insulation, adding fixtures and fittings such as door handles, locks, hinges, and closures, selecting lumber by size and strength to suit each job, sourcing wood to suit the customer's budget and style, calculating the number of fasteners required for each job, liaising with clients, suppliers, and other construction professionals, reading blueprints and designs to work to specifications prepared by other construction professionals, architects, and building code recommendations. Electrician salary. Electricians who work for the government tend to be the most highly compensated, followed by manufacturing, contracting, and employment services, but compensation across all sectors is as follows. Median annual salary, $55,190 at $26.53 an hour. Top 10% annual salary, more than $94,620 at $45.49 an hour. Bottom 10% annual salary, less than $32,940 at $15.84 an hour. Electricians are a highly unionized profession. In fact, the percentage of workers who belong to a union in 2018 was higher than that of workers in any other industry. Carpenter salary. Carpenters in the United States make an average salary of $41,758 per year or $20.08 per hour. People on the lower end of that spectrum, the bottom 10% to be exact, make roughly $33,000 a year, while the top 10% makes $52,000 a year. As most things go, location can be critical. New Jersey, Alaska, Washington, New York, and Connecticut provide the highest carpenter salaries. In other countries like the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, the salaries are also very competitive. Electrician Education Training and Certification This job doesn't require a college education, but it does require extensive training as well as licensing. Apprentice electricians must be at least 18 years old. Education, a high school diploma, or GED is required. Apprenticeship Electrician apprenticeship programs generally last four to five years and include a minimum of 576 hours of classroom instruction and 8,000 hours of on-the-job training. Licenses. Most states and municipalities require the electricians be licensed. They must pass an exam that tests knowledge of electrical theory, the National Electrical Code, and local electrical and building codes. Carpentry education, training, and certification. Vocational schools and technical colleges offer certificate and associate degree programs in general carpentry or in different carpentry crafts. A technical college program uses classroom instruction to teach building codes and layout, construction drawings and blueprint reading, safety, math, and English. 
Hands-on practical application training covers framing and finishing techniques, as well as using measuring instruments, hand tools, and power tools to work with lumber and other building materials. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, employers are more likely to offer higher wages to graduates of formal vocational education programs. www.bls.gov Carpentry students can also begin their training as a carpenter's helper, assisting skilled carpenters in order to master skills and craftsmanship through observation and practice. Trade unions and large general contractor firms frequently offer formal programs for carpentry apprenticeships, leading to certification as a journeyman carpenter. A formal apprenticeship may encompass up to four years and cover much of the same learning process as a vocational school. Apprenticeship programs include classroom instruction and on-the-job training. The curriculum can be developed by the master trade organization or through the use of a standardized trade-specific program. Electrician Work Environment Electricians might work indoors in residential and commercial buildings or outdoors on construction sites, sometimes in inclement weather. Working as an electrician can be uncomfortable and at times dangerous. Electricians work in cramped spaces and spend a lot of time standing or kneeling. They're prone to minor injuries such as burns, shocks, and falls. So wearing protective clothing and equipment at all times is important. Carpentry Work Environment Carpenters may spend a significant amount of their day working both indoors and outdoors. They can work in a private home, business, school, healthcare facility, or an outdoor area. They may work in inclement weather and spend long hours outside. A carpenter can work part-time hours, but many of them work full-time schedules. They work during the day, but some employers may require them to work at night depending on the project. Carpenters can work during the weekday and on the weekends when their employer requests them to. Carpenters often have physically strenuous jobs and spend long periods on their feet. They may also climb, crawl, squat, and remain in small spaces for prolonged periods at a time. There you have the main reasons to join these two professions. Which one would you choose and why? Conversely, why would you not choose a specific one? Be sure to check back for more videos like this. Until then, stay safe.